we're getting a little bit of a tour here of uh, of the Monster Wing guys, and uh, and we actually just ran into Tim Smythe, another sort of the co yard manager, team manager with uh, with Tugwell here. But Tim, I was asking you about the strength of these flaps. I know we've seen a couple of. Uh, a couple of times when something went wrong in San Diego, when one of the pins or whatever yeah. you know went, uh, um, and then the other day when the, the bottom flap, yeah. something went wrong with that. But are, are they fragile, or, or what's the story? Well, two people can lift them. I mean, they weigh about a hundred, a little bit less than hundred kilos each, and the the skin that's on them has got a lot of tension on it, and that tries to suck them all in, if you like. And what's the, this skin here? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a polyester fabric. It's like a sort of an untreated field body, actually. And it shrinks. It has the virtue of shrinking quite vigorously at about 150 degrees Celsius. So you lay it over the frame and then you and you heat we, and then you put heat on it. Precisely. And we, you can see up here, actually, we've got what we call the faulty towels. We've got this um, big gas tower. We, Folks, go to go, go to YouTube and type in "faulty towers" if you want to laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the Americans, I'm the sure best series the ever. Yeah, no, Not too many of the Americans know what it is, but I, I do. So, so they're they're pretty robust then, and 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 the, I mean the wing overall. You you're confident. I mean, you guys have had it out in what in almost 30 knots the other day. Yeah? We, we like it when it's in the boat. That's when it that's, it likes to be sitting vertical. You standing. get scared when it's when it's well, laying there floating and on the crane and that kind of thing. Oh, that's. Mine, yeah, they're, that's they're your that's your, your nightmare. Like a, I liken it to a big egg. A big egg. And, and it's like a it doesn't like to sit on itself. It almost wants to crush its shell. There's only two real spots we can sit at, and that's where the one where the um, shrouds connect. There's a bit of reinforcement, a small bulkhead. Other than that, the whole thing's just hollow. Right. And down at the mast step, of course, we have a grunty bulkhead to take the step. Right. And that's the best place to sit. We've got two cradles, but you know, every time it comes out, Mark and I sort of get. Nervous. Well, now let's talk about that. The other day it was on the crane, and uh, and we got a couple of different reports that it dropped and went bunk. Oh, I never heard of that. You never heard of that, huh? No. Apparently, there's a video floating around. Misinformation on that one, I think. Is it true? Yeah. Really? All right. Well, maybe that's why I never saw the video. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. There seems to be a lot of misinformation. Um, I think obviously that's part of the game here is, yeah. is, is playing with each other's spies and stuff. Um, did you guys? When did you know that there was no wing uh, uh, on the Swiss boat? We never really thought there. I mean, we sort of have, you know, we know people who know people who work there. And it's a small community. And we can sort of gauge on how big their effort is. And I mean, they could have surprised us, but it never we were, looked likely. But, but we were surprised as late as December that. Either they were building sails in Switzerland, or they were still doing a wing. Seahorse was speculating, Seahorse magazine was speculating, so we really weren't sure until we got here and we saw that no wing showed up. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, you know, you just don't know what to believe. They may be doing it, yeah. I, I mean, if, if they decided not to do it, I'd, I'd say it was probably less because of the physical challenges of building it, although they're, they're pretty big, and more because of the logistics of dealing with it, as yeah. we've been learning. Since we well, and we spoke to some folks who worked for you back in August, uh, and they told us that, that that you know the design was already done. They were just trying to figure out how the hell to store it and put it up and take it down. And, uh, and he was, or we no, no, you. Well, you know. So I mean, it, and, and, and and from my understanding, it took months to figure out the logistics of how to store a thing. Mark, yeah, I mean, it'd been a, a very, uh, you know, the evolution of it was actually not quite some time. Yeah, yeah. How, so, how did the two of you break up your? tasks because as co-heads of boat building you had this thing to do you had the mods to the platform you had pieces being built up in Anacortes plus the action in San Diego and this is what your third campaign together doing this with us yeah how did, how did, get, get closer together like so <laughs> I love executive he, producer he, how, did, how did you he guys keeps do his that? eye on me and I keep my eye on him <laughs> and, and we both um, just argue the top. We just criticize the fuck out of each other <laughs> and pull each other apart. Accuse each other of doing a useless That would be job. pretty much like most Kiwis I know. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much it's a very strong character Frick and frack. Yeah, so nothing sacred. And, and because of that, you can you can actually be, out of that comes constructive criticism. Right. Because, you know, it's like you can never be too proud in this game. It's when you think you, when you're confident, when you think you can do it, that's probably when you're going to screw up and fail. But pretty much, I mean, like for this project here, I mean, I mean, Tim basically had the whole bit of this project to run the wing. The wing. I mean, you know, he, he lived, ate, and slept it, and in that time, I mean, you know, the floats that would be built, and 
So you were doing the mods to the yep. I mean, the the, monsters. and all the other you know, bits and pieces that were going on with appendages and other things that all had to happen. What's it been like for you guys to work with sort of a, a whole new crew of, of, of people that are experts at this stuff, designers? Uh, um, you know, it's always interesting. We work with a lot of we've worked with a lot of designers over the years, and so engineers. So you get to to see how they you know, come up with different artists. It's always exciting. It's wonderful to work with the French. The French have got a lot of common with the New Zealanders, eh? Yeah. They sort of their approach to yachting, the yachting scene over there. No good guys. They like multi hulls, so do the Kiwis, they like you know? Well, They're sort of odd. They talk funny, yeah, they you know? They talk funny, yeah. <laughs> Just like we do. <laughs> Just like you do from the East Coast. <laughs> East Coast. What's been the hardest thing about the campaign? Just the uh, longevity of it. I mean, we. We went to a meeting in August of 2000 and 2007, and it was going to be a 10-month you know, run, basically. Went from that to a year and a half. Model holes and a yeah. model hole program. Then it went to two, two years. And the, the worst, the worst part about it is has been having to peak. I mean, I've got a terribly rude analogy, which sort of, you know describes it. But you've had, we've had to peak four or five times yeah. in this campaign. Normally you just you pace yourself and you pick yeah, once yeah. in a campaign, but we've had several false false events and you know and after each one of those peaking events when we've exhausted ourselves, hello, we've had to do it again. And that's been exhausted exhausting all Think you're event. peaking now? Looks like we're gonna finally get to, you know, follow through this yeah, time, isn't it? I mean, is the enthusiasm, you know, obviously there are times when people get burned out and people get oh, tired yeah. and we've been, is the enthusiasm we've been, back? Well, we, we, we've had to replace our team, our build teams. I mean, there's only four people left wow. from the original team. We've been through over, well over 150 people. Wow, just in the build team. Yeah. Easy. Jesus. Just chewing them out. <laughs> We're working not quite 24-7, but yeah. a lot of six-day weeks, yeah. no, a lot I mean, of weeks on, in a row. Well, on average, I mean, we did, we sort of, before we finished, before the end of the year, I mean, our average week, average week was about 75 hours a week yeah. per, man, per so man. We've had guys, we have, we've had one guy there who's got the record, he's done 3,700 hours in 2009. Look at that one out. He's, he's saving up for something. Yeah. <laughs> guys, guys, I, this is a serious question and please, no propaganda. Um, will it be re just as rewarding as it was to go back to building mono holes? When you go back, you mean? If and when <laughs> we go like. back to building monohulls. Going back to build any boat under some sort of arbitrary rule where they restrict the practices in order to hypothetically save money is always boring. I mean, the way we built those old version 5 boats, in theory to save, you know, make them save money, or Volvo boats, you know, to save money, you know, they stick a ruling on the pressure on the processing techniques on the materials that you use generally those things don't work and for us they're just a pain so you know we like it unbridled you know laissez-faire anarchy boat building anarchy you like the anarchy yeah exactly and you no rules. And, and and it's a and it's a challenge for you it's a oh, huge challenge. A challenge yeah i mean just when we start out building the platform i mean the the conversations that we have every day about how we're going to process something or manage something because something was falling behind on its timeline and yeah I mean it was a pretty intense build time in eight, that eight month period eight month period that we're building so yeah, it was a lot happening well boys I, I know you've you've earned the, the admiration of, uh, of hundreds of thousands of people if not millions by putting together what's got to be probably the coolest toy ever built for a sailor. <laughs> so congratulations and uh, we sure hope you win. Yeah, well, well, certainly, certainly thanks to Larry. Yeah. I mean, someone's got to finance this and kudos yeah. to him for having the balls to, to, to put his money off. where his mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you, Alan.